What's up? In the last episode, you learned about setting up RSpec Rails, the test framework for running RSpec tests in a Rails application. This is the, the main and primary fundamental tool that I use for running RSpec tests for production applications. The other main tool that I use is Factory Bots. We're going to set that up today. So I'm going to jump into the gem file. And in the last episode, we added the RSpec Rails gem directly to a test group. Now I'm gonna use factory bot rails as part of both development and test because it can be kind of handy when you're in IRB or in rails console uh, or pry rails or whatever to just rely on factories that you've already created for test mode to sort of configure a user or configure sort of pieces of data with, um, with predefined things that you might want already. So if we say gem factory bot rails and then bundle, install, this will add the factory bot gem to our Rails application. Uh, similar to RSpec Rails, factory bot Rails comes with some generators. So if we again run Rails G model dummy and just see what generators are going to be run, we'll be able to take a look and um, you'll notice that as part of the RSpec generators that are executing, we also see a factory bot execute uh, a generator execute and it's creating this new dummies file dummies.rb factory inside of spec factory so let's go take a look at that and so when you first create a model by default if there's no fields in the model then the factory is going to be empty like this let's actually go and rails d uh, model um, dummy we'll remove this and then regenerate one with a couple fields just to see uh, the the difference there so we'll say Rails G model dummy, and we'll give it like a name and maybe an age that is an integer and perhaps like a birth um, born at, which is a date time. And this should give us a little bit more interesting output. Okay, and then if we open up this factory, now you'll see that there's a couple things that were filled in for us. So this is the factory bot syntax for defining a factory. So we're, we're creating a new factory called dummy and inside of that factory, it has three properties uh, or three fields, three columns in the database, three whatever. And one of them is going to return a string. And so the, this name property here, when we create a new dummy, this will execute the block that we're passing as an argument to the name method. And whatever the return value is from the block, that's what it's gonna use as the value on the new dummy object. So if we were to say something like, uh, dummy is equal to factory uh, bot dot create and pass in dummy, then dummy dot name would equal my string, something like this, okay? Similarly, you can see it happening for the, uh, the date time for born at and also the ages returning an integer. So that's kind of that stuff is all sort of interesting. Okay, but before we can write any tests or do anything, we first need to run our migration. So I'm going to say rails g or rails db colon migrate. Now when you run migrations, it's going to run them in potentially several environments. So it's going to migrate a locally when you run the migrations, it's going to uh, make the database changes to your development database, but it'll also make those changes to a test database. So there's actually two different databases here. So if we actually jump into like database.yaml, you'll see that we have our default sort of adapter with our setup. We have a development database, and this is the name of it, form for tracker underscore development. And then we separately have a test database, form for tracker underscore test. So they're two separate databases. And then furthermore, there's gonna be a production database. That's a third database. That's the one that lives on Heroku when we deploy or wherever you are in production. Um, and so that is, those are like the three different databases. When you run the migrations locally, it's running development and test, uh, the migrations for those, so that when you are interacting with models in test mode, they're not messing with your development data or your production data. So there's a couple of, of like uh, foot guns or things to watch out for when you're working with uh, testing and test data but in particular, and that is, to never ever point your test suite at a production or at, even at a development database. Always make sure that your test suite is pointing at its own specific database. This is a really common um, mistake that, uh, or this is this is a, yeah, this is not necessarily a super common mistake, but this is a mistake that has happened at major companies where databases were deleted or dropped, production databases, and they had to be restored because a test suite was pointed at a production database. 
So that's something to keep in mind is like always be really careful about updating those settings so that you don't actually run test mode data against your production database. Because one of the tools too that's common within Rails is called Database Cleaner. And this goes through and deletes like all of the data in the database after your whole test suite runs. It makes your tests run faster locally, but it's super dangerous to accidentally point that at production and then just delete all of your data in production. So um, yeah, that was just sort of an aside about don't accidentally <laughs> delete your production database. All right, so now we've got uh, our database models uh, migrated. Let's open up this dummy spec model and just talk about how we might use this factory. So we'll say like it, maybe it like um, must have an age greater than 21 or something. And now we can say dummy is equal to factory bot dot create dummy. We pass in the symbol, which is the name of the thing that we want to create. And we get back, in this case, we're going to get back an actual instance of a dummy object. So we're going to get back a, uh, a dummy model instance. And because we're using create, that model will be persisted to the database. So now we can say something like expect uh, dummy dot age dot two, um, I think it's B and then you put greater than 21 or something like this, or maybe greater or equal than 21. Let's see if this runs. I can't actually remember the syntax. All right, so in this case, we said we expected it to be greater than or equal to 21 and we got back one. And that's because in our dump or in our factory, um, so if we go to our factories here into the dummies factory, uh, when our dummy is created, its age is being returned as one here. So what we could do is we could change this to 21 and now our test will pass. But that doesn't actually like, we're not, so to be clear too, we're not actually testing anything at this point, right? So let's change this to actually just be some random number. So if we said like ran from one to 100, right? And then we ran the tests. Now our tests are gonna be a flaky test where it's randomly gonna be generating data about this user, but it's gonna be different every single time. Um, so potentially what we what we might want to do is when we're writing our test that must have an age greater than 21 or something like we would we could potentially pass in that age so we could say age is equal to whatever 21 and now that will pass and it will be specifically 21 so you can have a factory that's going to create instances um, and then let's say like for what and then we can come down here and then we could also change it so that actually yeah we could also just change this so that it, it fails. Um, and we can see the failing test so that we know that like what we're passing in is what it actually is. So it says expected the dummy age to be greater than or equal to 21. We got 11 because that's what we explicitly passed in. So here you can have like a bunch of uh, defaults, right? That might be set. And then you could also pass in specific values here. Um, so that can be handy. Another thing that you might want to do is that if you have some uniqueness constraints, so let's say Rails G migration add email to dummy, and we're going to say email is a string. Now, if we open the migration, add email to dummy, and we might say something like null, false, and then we want to add an index to dummies for email un unique true, rake db migrate. So now we're going to add a uniqueness constraint to our dummy model. Now we can go back into our um, our dummies generator here, and now we need to have an email field. So if we say email is equal to like I don't know, uh, let's set it to hello at cjav.dev, and that's what will be returned when we create a new instance of a dummy. So if we execute this function or execute this test, which again is a dummy test. We're not actually testing any of the model's functionality. We're just kind of exploring what this factory factory bot can do for us. Um, and let's say that we're gonna just remove this age situation and we're gonna expect the dummy.email.2 equal hello at cjab.dev, okay? So we're gonna run our test. Everything is fine. We get back hello at cjab.dev, great. Now let's say that we wanted to update our test so that we maybe we needed to create two dummies and they were gonna interact with each other. So maybe we have dummy one and we have dummy two, right? And now if we try to run our test, you might have some case where like a user is a friend of another user or a user um, can like a post of another user and so you needed to create two users. Well, in our case, the, uh, the email address field has a uniqueness constraint and so right now when we call, when we try to run the migration or when we try to run the test, 
it's saying this is failing because when it's creating dummies, it, both dummies are returning the same email address, and so it can't insert those into the database because, they, they, um, because of this uniqueness constraint. And so in this case, there's a couple different options. One is that we can use sequence uh, here, and this is, a common, this is a common practice where uh, you pass it a block. Um, so sequence is another helper method that comes from FactoryBot. You can pass in the field that you want to sequence. That takes a block where um, there's an, a block argument n, and we can use that block argument to uh, create like an alias here. So then we can, we can add in n as an alias as part of our email address. And now if we run this test, every single time this is executed, we're gonna get a new email that has a number in the email address. So now we see hello plus one, that has like the alias. Now we get rid of our uniqueness constraint, but now our test is failing because we're no longer matching what this says. So if we were to say like, okay, we want um, dummy email one to be hello plus one, hello plus two, whatever, this should pass um, and have two different email addresses. Okay, so now our, our database constraint is, um, is met and we've kind of got like a, a factory where we're, we have a unique field and we're able to just generate new email addresses as we go. So that can be handy. Um, and yeah, so this is, this is how you set up FactoryBot. There's one other thing I want to show and that is that like inside of your tests for dummy spec here, right? So everywhere that we're saying FactoryBot.create, um, this, this, uh, this class name here is only required um, or there, there's like a shortcut to, to calling create, and we can actually just remove the entire class factory bot. Now, in order to get access to that create method, we need to include um, some of the methods that come from factory bot. So what we need to do is go tell our spec about how this works. And so we can go into, I believe we can go into our rails helper here. Yeah, so our, our spec.configure, and we wanna tell it about the, all the methods from factory bot. So we need to go into factory bot and in the in the readme for factory bot here there is a guide to configure factory bot so you may want to um, it says you may want to configure your test suite to include factory bot methods so we can go to the configuration and for rails i yeah so our spec configure factory bot syntax methods so i'm going to copy that and then just drop it down here config.include factory bot syntax methods and then we should now be able to just write create instead of writing build um, Okay, and then our test is back to uh, back to executing successfully. The other thing I wanted to do was run, I think, yeah, okay, so we've got pry rails. So let's run rails console and open up the rails console. And again, I want to just show how it's convenient to operate with these methods directly from um, outside of a test. It might be handy to just say like, oh, I, I need a dummy object. Instead of saying like dummy, dot new and passing in like name and age and all the things that you need to pass in. Instead, now we can just say factory bot dot create uh, dummy. And now we get a, an actual instance of a dummy back. So dummy is a real object and you can tell that we've executed this once. And so that's like what's stored in the database. And um, oops, here one thing that you can see is that we've actually saved this dummy to the database. Right, so it has an ID. That ID property tells us that it's in the database. So if we say like dummy.all, we should get back that one instance of the dummy that we created. We could again, we could create another dummy here, and this is gonna now say like dummy.count. Now we have two dummies in the database, two dummy objects in the database. Um, and so the thing that's interesting is that we can also say like dummy or like, yeah, dummy three is equal to factory bot dot build dummy. And you'll see now that the ID field is nil, okay? The ID field is nil, and this is not actually persisted. When we say build, it's not gonna actually stick this into the database. So now if we were to say uh, dummy.count, we should still get back two, and we do. The nice thing about build is that it executes really, it makes your tests execute really fast. So if you don't actually need the objects to be persisted into the database, you can use dot build and that will speed up your test suite a little bit because you don't actually have to like write to the database. Um, so that's especially handy if you're uh, writing a humongous test suite that might take hours, you might be able to refactor several of the tests to use build instead of create.
to not actually persist to the database, but instead just use the objects in memory. Um, okay, so we could even do like dummy three dot age, right? So if you have simple methods that are on the models that you need to write tests about, but you don't actually need the, the model to be saved in the database, this is a really good handy tool. Especially, I, I have found, especially in like uh, model specs where you're just doing kind of unit tests, uh, you can use build a little bit more frequently than if you're in like a, a bigger end-to-end -end or system test, um, you will typically want to use create so that when you're actually going through the entire process of um, clicking on different elements on your page, those are those are really in the database. All right, so that is how you set up Factory Bot. Um, it's worth mentioning that almost every time that I use Factory Bot, I need to go and look up the, the syntaxes for a lot of these things. So I will head in here. There's a lot of ways that you can make like nested factories and factories with associations and other things like that. Um, so I always head over to the documentation for Factory Bot and um, yeah, read through this. So this is an example where you have a factory that has the name post and then you can just drop in um, the, the name for another association. So like if this post had an associated author, you could say um, just author and that would create the other model using its factory. So like this, yeah, um, a user, this will like create a user object because it knows that an author is an alias for the user class, whatever you can, this is one of the ways you can create associations. You can also, um, anyway, like long story short, head over to the docs for factory bot to get all the details. But in this episode, hopefully you were able to take away how to just set up factory bot and get running. The final thing I wanted to leave you with was that in application, dot rb down here when we set up um when we set up our spec we uh configured some of the generators i believe you can say g dot factory bot um factory bot uh is equal to false or maybe just false and that will disable the uh the generators for factory bot g dot let's see go back to the main readme g dot um, okay, yeah, so we can just say g.factorybot false and that will disable the generators for factorybot. Um, but I like to keep them in there, so I wanna keep those around. Uh, and yeah, I think that's pretty handy. Uh, all right, so in the next episode, we will talk about writing some actual tests for this application. We'll go through the process of, um, yeah, putting a little bit of testing around some of the, the, the methods that we have built into um, our models. And we'll start with model testing and sort of unit testing first. All right. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.